Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today's video is actually probably one of the most requested videos I've ever received uh, and it's back on Power Automate and it's demonstrating how we can use the tool to combine multiple files from in the same folder. So the scenario we'll look at today is we've got some old sales data uh, and again mentioned sales data. This is all complete random data. So there's no uh, sense of data being obviously viewed here at all, just in case that comes to mind. So we can see if we go into snapshots, we've got three files and do ignore the historical dating on them. And each file contains uh, some uh, sales data for that um, actual date. So if I was to go into this one for the 31st of Jan, you'll see we've got five columns of data and what 13 rows or 12 rows if you exclude the headers. And what I want to do is for each of these files in here, we want to combine them into one master file. So we've only got three files here, but regardless of if you've got three files or a hundred files, this process will work based on the files content. So whatever's in that folder, it is all gonna get combined into this process. So what we'll do also one thing to mention, I've also got a templates file here called headers. Uh, so just some context before we jump into that, all this simply is is what it says, a template file for headers. And it's just an easy way for us to pick up this file and to use the headers in here rather than having to paste them in our step. So template files are a great uh, sort of say trick uh, to save time when it comes to using headers. Uh, but just for context, as when we look at that later on, you know what that is. So in Power Automate, uh, we'll jump straight into it. So the first thing we need to do is obviously identify the files within the folder uh, that we wish to combine. So simply what we're gonna do is go into our folder option down the left-hand side here, and we're gonna go down to get files in folder, and we'll pull that across into our main pane here. So we just now need to navigate to that folder. Uh, so for me, it's going to be, if I can remember where it is, it's gonna be in here, and it's going to be in snapshots. So we're just selecting this, the folder as a whole. Uh, and as you might have seen in previous videos, there's many options we can apply to this. We can even do some filtering to the files if it's applicable. But for us today, we don't need that. So we'll just simply click on to save. And then next, before we get into looking at each of these files, we're then going to go into launch our template file. So we'll go to Excel and launch Excel, drag that into the middle there. And we don't want to open a blank document because we want to use our template file we just looked at, which contains our headers. So again, just to remember where I have to source this from. So I think it's into these folders, at templates, and then headers. And we'll go OK. Um, that looks good. Yes, we'll leave it as visible. It's not a problem. And this is where, obviously, I don't know if I touched on this before. If you scroll down, you're actually able to rename your variable if more useful. So Excel instance. Uh, let's put this Excel instance output. Just so as we look at this, as we build, we know that output is going to be our final combined file. So let's save that. So I believe we now have the two key elements we need to start uh, going through and getting this data. So the first thing, well, not the first thing, because obviously it's now the third thing, but we want to now loop uh, through each of these files in this folder, or the files that we've got in this very first step here. So what we need to do there is simply search for each. I'm very lazy, so I always like to use the search box there. And once it's worked out what it's doing, sometimes take a bit of time, yeah, we can see within loops, we've got this option of for each. So this is logic that we want to apply to each of the files that are in step number one within this folder. So the value that we need to iterate here is simply going to be current item. So if we just go into our, um, uh, our variables on the side here, sorry, we can select list of files, select that, and you can see it's gonna store it as current item. So basically what it's gonna iterate through is the list of files, what you can see uh, at the top here, this being the variable that has been um, uh, received from going into the folder. So if we do save on here, we've now got our loop set up and ready to go. So what we'll now need to do, and again, I'm sorry for jumping over, but jumping around, but hopefully this will start to make uh, sense as we step through this, is we're gonna go back and do an Excel process. And what we need to do is we need to understand which is the next available row within our template folder. So if you can imagine what's happened here is we've launched our Excel file containing our headers. So we know there's data in row number one, but we now need uh, Power Automate to identify that the next free row or next available row is going to be row number two. And that's there where we want to now paste our data. 
So we need to go into the advanced section here uh, of the Excel options. And we, right at the very bottom, you can see there's get first three row on column. So we're going to click and drag, but this time make sure we drag it into our for each loop. So Excel instance, so which Excel files are going to be looking at? Well, we've only got one open at the moment, and we can see it's Excel instance output at the top here. And if we were to do this drop down, you can see there is only the one option. Had we got multiple Excel files open, you would see obviously a lot longer list there. So for us, we're only interested in column A. Uh, all columns hopefully are going to be the same, but ultimately column A serves as the good test for us to know which has got the next available free row. Okay, so now that we've identified which is the next free row, we can start loop or actually opening each of the files within our for each loop. So what we'll do, once again, we'll launch Excel, make sure it brings into the, the uh, for each. And again, we don't want a blank document. What we actually want is to open the following document. And where it says document path here, all we need to do is in the variable here, select current item. So current item being the current item we're on, within our loop of all of those files. So select current item, do select, uh, make instance visible. Now nah, I'm not interested in making it invisible, but you can if you wish, and we shall go save. So you can see that's ready for us. So we've now opened that first file. The next thing we need to do now is obviously read the data within that file. So if we go into again our uh, list of Excel options, we should have an option here from read from Excel worksheet. Yep. So you can see just down here, read from Excel worksheet. We'll drag that into there. Excel instance. So now we're going to have multiple options available. So we've got our output file, which is the one here, but we need this Excel instance. So this is the current one that we're working with, uh, obviously having looped through the files. So what do we want to retrieve? The value of a single cell? No, we want all available values from within the worksheet. Uh, obviously you could define a specific range of cells here, uh, but what we're gonna do is keep it the most basic option available and just take all available values from the worksheet. Uh, we're also quite confident that all the fact we we are confident that all the files are going to have that exact same template because there's another process that uh, is, is building those files in the first place. But again, we'll stick with the simple option, what we've got here. So we're now reading all of that content. Then what, once we've read this data, obviously we now need to paste it into our uh, output file. So in order to do that, we will go down and find write to Excel. Uh, there you go, just slightly big. There you go, write to Excel. So this is where we're now obviously going to be using the information we gathered up here, the get first free row on the column. So the Excel instance we want is the Excel instance output. The value to write is going to be our Excel data. So where's it gone? Data table. So this second one here. So this is the Excel data that we've got when we read from this Excel worksheet. So we can go select on there write mode on that specific cell. So we want to go into, yep, yeah, on specific cell. And that specific cell for us is going to be column A. And the row is going to be, if we go into here once again, the first free row on the column. So if you select OK. So we can see what's happening here is we're now looking at our output file. We want to paste into that file our Excel data, what was just captured from this the last file opened. And we want to paste it onto a spec specified cell, and that specified cell was is within column A, and it's going to be the first three, uh, the first free row in the column. So what we've captured here. And then probably what you can start to see is the reason for this get first free row. Uh, being at the start of the uh, each loop is for every time it goes into a new file. And obviously as this file, the, mark, the output files gets bigger, obviously that free row is gonna become um, lower and lower in the list as more data is added to it. So if we click save, we've got that element done. So now all we need to do is tidy it off. So the first thing we're gonna do is close obviously the current file. So Excel instance, so we want to do Excel instance here because that's what we want to close. Uh, we're not bothered in saving the workbook. And then lastly, what we want to do, this will now obviously loop through and do every single file within our specified folder. Uh, but once it's all done, the last thing to do will be obviously to close our template file we've got here. So what we're simply gonna do is we'll go into close Excel and we'll bring this outside of the for loop because we only want it to close once all the iterations are done. 
So ETA Excel instance is going to be the output. Uh, before closing, yes, we do want to save. So we'll go save document as uh, default extension. So we'll leave the extension as it is. But for us, the file path is simply going to be navigate. Well, we'll navigate to where it's going to be. So documents, Excel. Uh, I've got created a new folder called merge. And I'm simply going to call this combined. But again, you could obviously call it something a bit more creative. And then we'll select OK and finally save. So this is the, extens uh, the extensive list, the whole 10 steps we need to obviously build this combined file. So what should we shall do as always is let's minimize this and we'll bring up our uh, file explorer for our, not our template one, but we'll go into our uh, destination uh, file. So let's go into here, yeah, there we go, we've got it ready. So what we should hopefully see when we click run on here is it will go through and loop through here. I think it was three files. And ultimately we will see a combined file being created in this merge file here. So without further delay, let's hit play. I say play, it's actually called run, <laughs> just to be really specific. Cool, so you can see it's opening the file and then you'll see it start to continuously loop through all of these steps here. And obviously we can see it looping around on the screen and um, it shouldn't take too long because not got many files. And yes, we can see it went down to that last step and finished. And we've now got a new file created over here called combined. So if we just double click onto that and just see how the content is looking. Yeah, we can see that we've now, now got all of our data is in that file. However, uh, we can see that our column headers are being kept in here multiple times. And that's because I've made a mistake and not changed one piece of information. So what we'll do is we'll go and delete that combined file as if it never existed. So what we need to do now is just go back into our flow and specifically step number six. So read from Excel worksheet. So we'll just double click that. And within the advanced section, you can see we've got first line of range contains column names. So we'll just tick that just so it knows that we're not interested in that information and click save. And once that's saved, yep, we're all good to go. So one more time, we'll just click run. And hopefully this time it will now work as intended. See, you've got this head, it's got the header file now open. It's going to continuously loop through and open all those other files. And you can see the, the variables obviously updating as we go through. Ah, great. So we've now got to the end. Just waiting for it, for, for it to finish. Yeah, and then we can see we've got our combined file. So let's now open this one. And there we go. We can see the data is looking a lot better and how we want it. So if we just expand these columns, we can now see all of our data has been captured. We've got the 30th of November, 31st of 12th, and the 31st of January. So we know all three data sets have been captured. And of course, our column headers are only appearing once uh, rather than multiple times like we saw earlier. So one last thing I just noticed as well is our flows seem to keep looping at the end there. So all I'm going to add in there as well is if I search into stop, and again, this is probably good uh, good to note for good practice. Uh, once obviously it finds the options, yeah, we've got flow controls. So I'm just literally going to go down and bring this stop flow at the bottom here, end flow successfully, just so it knows that that's obviously the last step is number 10, and then it can exit the flow, just so that if there's any confusion, it's not going to continue running. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that video, and it gave you an answer to your question if you're one of the many people who contacted me asking for such a video. If it did, please don't forget to give the video a like, as it's not only greatly appreciated by me, but it does help that all-important YouTube algorithm. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please can I ask you to hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell notification button. That way you'll be notified as more of our videos come out in the future. So thank you very much again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.